Santé. Hello and welcome to Le Mans Classique. This year is a very special edition, historic even, as we celebrate the centenary of the Le Mans 24 hours. We'll take you on a journey through time. Here we go. Le Mans Classic is the largest gathering of classic cars on the continent. Just imagine. 10 grids of racing cars, dating from the pre-war period to the beginning of the 21st century. Several hundreds of cars for budding drivers, nearly 9,200 club cars. Plenty of entertainment within the long circuit of the Le Mans 24 hours, exhibitions everywhere and an extraordinary atmosphere. Le Mans Classic is much more than a meeting place for classic car enthusiasts. Le Mans Classic is an experience you cannot miss, even only for a day, or even better, four days. Alone, with family, with friends, with connoisseurs, between novices, there is something for everyone. Obviously, there are the drivers to take the wheel of the 850 cars entered in the Le Mans Classic races. Mostly gentlemen drivers, but also former Le Mans winners such as double winner Gerard Larousse. Or Jürgen Barth, winner of the 1977 edition with a Porsche. Eric Larry, winner with Peugeot. And Emmanuel Apiro with Audi five times on the top step of the podium and many, many others. Still in love with Le Mans and thrilled at the idea of driving classic racing cars on the 14-kilometer circuit. I love all cars. Ever since I was a child, I was very passionate about them. When I was six, I decided to become an F1 driver. And after that, I drove plenty of different cars and one day I was lucky enough to discover this extraordinary machine. I do this to preserve these beautiful cars, have some great races and put up a good show for the many spectators who come to admire these cars that still make us dream. And it's a centenary as well. It's an absolutely fantastic event. I love everything about it. The cool cars, the atmosphere, the, the shops, the, the whole setup. Fantastic. Jan Magnussen is enthralled. He has never known Le Mans like this. The Le Mans Classic experience is indeed totally complementary to that of the contemporary 24 hours. Many of those who experienced Ferrari's historic victory and centenary festivities in mid-June were also present at the Classic to celebrate once again 100 years of history of the world's greatest endurance race. And what event is more suitable than this one to celebrate a century of racing? You only had to visit the Museum of the 24 Hours with its centenary exhibition to make the obvious link with all the cars lined up for the races. Better, the cars from the temporary exhibition, the vast majority of the original winning cars in the Le Mans 24 hours, took part in an impressive parade on Saturday afternoon. Never again will we be able to see these cars together, or maybe in another 100 years. For this parade, he was at the wheel of the Matra he drove back in the day. Henri Pescarolo, the record holder of the number of participations in the Le Mans 24 hours, could not hide his pleasure. But during this edition of Le Mans Classic, Henri lived an even more intense moment. Henri Pescarolo, it is a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure for me as well, especially standing next to a beautiful car like this one. It's a car that finished second in the Le Mans 24 hours in the hands of Sébastien Loeb. Together with uh, Eric Hellery, he was one of the drivers of the team that I created. And the car is called the Pescarolo. It means a lot to me to be able to drive this car. For back in the day, it was my drivers obviously who raced this car, not me. So yes, this is pretty emotional for me. The 
together with Emmanuel Collard, Henri raced and won one of the races of the endurance racing legends, driving a car bearing his name. The ERL is the most recent racing grid at Le Mans Classic, with cars from the early years of this century and the end of the previous one, both prototypes and GT cars. Although Le Mans Classic aims to be an evocation of the 24 hours, it can sometimes rectify some of history's injustices. In 98 and 99, the Toyota GT1 was an unbeatable car, on paper that is. It could have won, yes, it had all the qualities to do so, the drivers, the car. But Le Mans remains a somewhat complicated mistress, as Toyota often experienced. But it remains an iconic car, and it's an honor for me to drive this car this weekend. It's a real pleasure. It should have been the first Toyota to win at La Sarthe, except that Le Mans remains Le Mans, and in those years the race chose two other winners. But this time, in the hands of François Perrodeau, the Toyota GT1 finally won a race on the 24-hour circuit. When Patrick Peter invented Le Mans Classic in 2002, he wanted it to be a celebration of endurance racing, an event for all generations. The best example undoubtedly is Little Big Mom. <laughs> Nearly a hundred kids between ages 7 and 12 drive on the long Le Mans circuit. For their pleasure, but also for that of their mums and dads. And all this created some vocations. Would you have liked to do this as a child? Of course, I would have loved it. My son did it when he was little, and now he's driving the real racing cars. I think he was touched by the virus on that occasion. It's so adorable, so cute. It's fantastic, really. And if on top of that it's Rafa Nadal giving the start in the company of DJ Drogba, the event for the little ones simply becomes superb. To fittingly celebrate the centenary, marked in the pre-war era by the Bentley boys claiming five wins at the wheel of their powerful open machines, a lineup of more than 70 Bentleys from Benjafield's Racing Club acted as a support race to Le Mans Classic. Almost a century later, the passion for the British brand and the history of the Bentley boys at Le Mans is still very much alive. The pioneers of 1923 could not have imagined that a century later their crazy adventure would be celebrated as the greatest race in the world. Lined up on the edge of the track for the typical Le Mans start of Grid 1, the drivers undoubtedly had a heartfelt thought for these men and women who, when the French flag dropped, also ran to their cars. For the starting procedure, you must engage the circuit breaker, open the fuel flow, feed the oil compressor, adjust the ignition advance, use a special button to get the fuel into the engine. So there are six or seven buttons to be pushed. And even if I were to be 20 years younger, I'm still not sure that I would be the first of the line. It 
It was both a physical and intellectual effort for the drivers at the wheel of their incredible machines. Cars with often disappeared names such as Shinari Walker, the first winners, Sanjay, Talbo Lago, Tracta, the large Alvis Lagonda, or even Delahaye, like this 135S Le Mans. This chassis participated three times in Le Mans, but with different bodies because it burned down. And for its last participation in 1951, it was rebuilt with a striking streamlined body. The, the concept of this car was for that time already so amazing. The car is so easy to drive, uh, so re relaxing, and you can be really fast with this car. Um, the handling is fantastic, the brakes are fantastic. It's very easy with the Kotal gearbox uh, to shift uh, gears. It's, it's really relaxing. I'm also driving a 250 LM, but if you uh, see how uh, more hard you have to work compared to this car, it is really amazing what they already did in 1936. On the other hand, at that time, the lights on the cars were not very efficient. So the night race for Grid 1 was a real test of bravery, under the admiring gaze of many spectators who continued watching from the grandstands for a large part of the night, but also in the Le Mans Classic Village to fully experience the night action and get a taste of the many festive and cultural activities. Did you choose this race or it's just to watch a show? Watch all of it. All of it. All, of it. all the races. Camping. Camping, driving here in classic cars. It has, to be, it has to be vintage or classic cars. We came to Le Mans purely for the classic. So we drove across in TR6. TR6. So we came in convoy and had a lovely drive down through rural France. 12 hours driving. British fans, they are certainly the most passionate of enthusiasts. Is it not said that Le Mans is the biggest British race, but taking place in France? And the best link between Le Mans and the British was undoubtedly this car, a de Cadenet. Yeah, the last time this car was here was uh, about 43 years ago. It finished fifth overall um, at the mall with Alan de Cadenet, who sadly passed away last year, and also Chris Kraft drove with him. Um, and it, this car came fifth overall in 1977. Cadenet was of French origin and drove his own cars designed by Lola. As a passionate small manufacturer, he even managed a podium finish at Le Mans in 1976. He was part of that beautiful story of motor racing enthusiasts taking on the big manufacturer teams. The best known of them in Le Mans history is undoubtedly Jean Rondeau, who won in 1980 at the wheel of his own car, beating Porsche. But before becoming Rondeau, the cars had another name. The Inaltera is a car built by engineer Jean Rondeau and financed by a wallpaper firm called Inaltera, led by Charlotte Jamez. Even then it was an iconic car, for it was built in Le Mans. And it only took him eight months to do so. Only at Le Mans Classic is it possible to see a De Cadenet next to a Rondo and an Inaltera. Nights are short in July and the sun peaks out over the pre-grid on Sunday morning. There are still many races to be contested in this edition of Le Mans Classic. Among them is a race for Grid 2, for cars from the immediate post-war period. A period when the European industry rose from its ashes and the Le Mans 24 Hours was organized again from 1949 onwards. In 1951, Porsche lined up for the very first time at Le Mans, with a 356 similar to this reconstitution. As for Renault, in 1953 they opted for this prototype, or at least a modified 4CV, to go fast on the Mulsanne Straits. There are not many people that know this car. 
There's only one, based on a 4CV engine of 950 or 1000 cc, and it was built by Jean Redelet, and he started from this small engine, with only 70 brake horsepower, to build a very light car. It only weighs 500 kilograms. He also used some aerodynamic elements, and it reached 175 kph on the straights. There are so many things to see here, and this is one of those little gems. Berlin, Rome, 1938. Yes, Marine, this is the ancestor to the very first Porsche, the Type 64. In reality, it's a Beetle with bodywork by Ferdinand Porsche, designed to take part in the Berlin-Rome race of 1939, a race that was eventually cancelled when World War II began. Hi, Marine. Remy, how are you? Have a seat. But what a setup. That's how we do things. Very 60s, isn't it? That's what drives our club, the whole 1960s camping atmosphere. All of these accessories really add to the classic cars. Absolutely. Is this one of the reasons why the public attends this event? Exactly. For this atmosphere? These days, Le Mans Classic has become a more complete experience. It's not only about the races, it's also about what happens away from the track. And when you look at the size of the clubs during this edition, this is also why people visit this event. Sometimes they spend almost an hour with us, looking at every little detail on the cars and on the vans. And I always push our members to bring some period items. That could be a trailer that transforms into a boat like this one. Or small tables. Or little tents. I always push them to bring those things. Because I think it reinforces the experience we offer our visitors. Because they are here to experience something. To travel through time for three or four days. Rémi, thank you very much. The term experience really is key for Le Mans Classic. In particular, when you walk around the clubs, more than 8,000 cars are participating in this event. An experience not to be missed. Oh. 235,000 visitors attended Le Mans Classic this year. A dizzying figure which shows how much the automobile and its history are of interest to the general public. For many, visiting Le Mans Classic is synonymous with all kinds of experiences. The opportunity to drive around the circuit of more classic vehicles, for example. We are entering the chicane ahead of the tire to attend an exceptional auction. 255, to admire unique exhibitions offered by major brands or federations. or even, for the most daring or the luckiest among them, complete a hot lap aboard sports cars on the iconic 14km Le Mans circuit. And during all this, there's one race after the other for 24 hours. We continue our journey on the timeline on the pre-grid of Grid 3, reserved for cars built between 1957 and 1961. A small roadster caught our attention. One could easily think it's a Lotus 11, but it isn't. No, it's the, not a Lotus, it's a Tojero. It was a small company, a British company, but the owner was of the Portuguese origin. Uh, and they built some nice car, not many. When this car was built in 1958, especially for Le Mans. There are a thousand ways to experience and celebrate Le Mans Classic. And on the pre-starting grid, we met a couple of lady drivers who, like in the 1960s, played the game down to the smallest of details. The Lotus Elite, shared by Gabi van Oppenheim and Karina Laumann, did not put a wheel on a truck or a trailer to travel to Le Mans. And we drove it together to 
it to the circuit and now we're racing it and um, hopefully if everything goes well we will drive it back. Twirling around the circuit of Le Mans, it is obvious that many are fans of a period, a model or a manufacturer. In the Besson family, it has always been Alpine, and the virus is transmitted from one generation to the next. Ever since I was a little boy, I went to endurance races with them. I was part of the pit crew together with my mum and the rest of the technical team. Motorsport has been part of my and my family's lives for a very long time now. And I was lucky enough that, once I had my driving permit, my dad allowed me to drive these cars. Of these, eight were built. Four were destroyed by fire, so there are only four left. And of those four, this is the only one that is still racing. I bought this car from the Museum of Mougin some 35 years ago. I really wanted this type of car, but there weren't any available. So I went up to the people at the museum and I told them that I wanted to buy their car. It wasn't easy, but eventually they allowed me to buy it. So originally, this car was in the Museum of Mougin in the south of France. With this A220 sporting a V8 engine, Alpine was aiming for overall victory at Le Mans in 1968 and 1969, but that goal would never be achieved. It must be said that in those years there was a hard fight between Ferrari and Ford first, and then Ford and Porsche, featuring one of the most legendary cars in the history of the 24 hours of Le Mans, the Ford GT40. It's a 64, it's one of the uh, five prototypes two were destroyed in period here when they were testing early on and then they were trying to sort out the aerodynamics so this is one of the three that are left. It's a Mark I, the one that won in 66 is a Mark II, but yeah, a lot of the development work came from the five prototype cars. There's a ton of differences. The chassis is a little bit different, the noses are different. They ran four different noses on this car. This is the second iteration of the noses. So they were trying to figure out the aerodynamics. They played with canards and different things. So. Uh, they were still in the in, in work process. And this is the Ford GT40. The original, the real one, the one immortalized by Hollywood in the Ford versus Ferrari movie. It's arguably the most famous racing car in the world. Uh, in my opinion, for sure, there's a, there's four Ford wins and uh, three winners, and this is one of the this is the first one. So the 1966 famous one two three finish. And we did a full restoration with uh, my friends in New Hampshire at Rare Drive, and we did a complete to try to make it exactly as it was in period, including the little fuses and the little all the little Shelby touches that they did for reliability. So uh, we tried to make it as close to how it started in '66 as possible. After the four resounding wins of the GT40 in the 1960s. Porsche began its harvest of victories to become the most successful manufacturer in the history of the Le Mans 24 hours. The German brand had an extremely successful period during the Group C era. In the 80s and early 90s, Group C was undoubtedly the category that produced the most beautiful prototypes in automotive history. Among them, the iconic Porsche 956 and 962. And this is chassis number three. This won the world championship in 1985 and also helped Derek Bell secure his uh, driver's championship that year. They, uh, here at Le Mans, they started uh, on pole, uh, finished third that year, and then they came back in 1986 and they uh, started third and uh, then won it outright, also winning the uh, driver's championship in 86 and finishing second in the world championship that year. So it's got a handful of other wins, including I believe Monza and I got to use my little cheat sheet here, Brands Hatch, Mossport, Hockenheim, second at Spa, Pol um, yeah, and so on. So, marvelous car. A 962 with such a pedigree should be in the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart, and yet it's owned by a private collector. Years ago, Porsche made an offer on the car, and it's funny, Dad asked me, he's like, what do you think, Malcolm? I'm like, oh, heck no, we gotta hold on to that, that thing's cherry. So, we have, and uh, boy, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to uh, step into this on a weekly, or on a weekend basis. Porsche reigned over Group C for the first six years of the category. It was Jaguar that interrupted that series in 1988. But if you're a Jaguar lover, you think in 1988. And uh, obviously Jaguar is sort of back to Le Mans. You know, for me, the XJR9 is an iconic sort of uh, piece of history. 
And I, I, you know, I have a collection of Jaguars, so uh, it was an obvious choice. Not a Porsche, but a, a Jaguar. Over the course of the weekend, Le Mans Classic brought together more than 800 racing cars, most built to win the most famous race in the world. Many drivers try to explain what it feels like to be at the wheel of their racing car, but perhaps John explained it best. It's hard to explain, but you know, when it's when it's on the track and you're on the cambers and you're following the road, and it, it just it just feels it's part of you. It feels it's it, 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 it's it's home. This is how the 2023 edition of Le Mans Classic comes to an end. A celebration of the centenary of the Le Mans 24 hours. Le Mans Classic will be back in 2025. See you in two years. The book on the centenary is now closed. You will have to wait until 2025 for the next edition of Le Mans Classic, which, anniversary or not, will once again be an exceptional event, not to be missed under any circumstances.